the latest Gophers class, the true freshman of 2024 that will be in this year's upcoming season. Who could stand out amongst the most? We're talking about the top five take fives for the class of 2024 today. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. What's up, y'all? You are listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Rob, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Today, we're doing a Sunday sermon of episodes. Happy Easter to all of those. And I am excited to jump into the class of 2024. We're talking about top five, take five. And what is that? I'm taking five of the players in each of the classes of the last three years, 2022, 23, 23, and 2024, and putting who I think are the top five players that will leave their legacy on the program the most of those classes. So we're going to dive into that. And today's is the hardest one to dive into because we haven't seen these players even take a snap with the Gophers. In fact, most of these players we haven't even seen on the field. A couple of them we've seen in the first spring practice, but still tiny, tiny sample size. So we're looking at upside. We're looking at potential. We're looking at what they did in high school and who I think could have the most impact based on opportunities, based on positional availabilities, and based on recruiting rankings. But I don't think just because you're a top rated recruit means you're going to have the most impact. We've seen here with the Golden Gophers, that is not always the case. And if you've missed our first two shows, we've done 2022 and 2023. I think of the three classes, 2023 is the strongest in my opinion, and it's probably also the lowest rated across the recruiting rankings. So that should tell you right there, don't always take these recruiting ranking systems as the end all be all, as the gospel, because you never know until they actually start playing these games. And I've seen the recruiting systems and recruiting rankings tweak their little ranks and reviews of players after they've seen players succeed later on in their careers. Now that seems a little slimy to me. It's a little defeating the purpose of how the player was ranked and recruited in the beginnings of their actual recruitment as opposed to what they ended up being. Because I know Tyler Newbin wasn't initially a four-star across many of the platforms. And all of a sudden, I saw him at the top of our, our recruiting rankings of that class three, four years down the line. I know that Mo Ibrahim started out as a two-star guy, and all of a sudden, after a few years of some success, he magically turned into a three-star on some platforms. So I know these guys are tweaking things behind the scenes, so don't always take it as the gospel. Now, let me get off my soapbox, and let's get back to the top five take five of the class of 2024. Now, I am going to name some... uh, honorable mentions in this class, but I do want to list the entire class too, because there are probably still some folks out there that are like, oh, I'm not used to the names. I'm not familiar with all the names of this class so far. So let's go through the whole class before we dive into our top five, take five. First, you've got Nathan Roy, Drake Lindsay, Julian Johnson, Mike Gerald, Jacob Simpson, Jaden Wright, Sam Macy, Fame Ijeboy, and Dallas Sims. Those are all the early enrollee recruits of the class of 2024. Then you've got Alan Suckup, Coy Parrish, Riley Sunrum, Brett Carroll, Mason Carrier, Simon Seidel, Zahir Rayner, uh, Jalen Smith, Mo Sain, Jalen Hicks, and Samuel Madu. So a very healthy class right now. 247 has them ranked as the 39th class overall. If you're looking at just freshmen and no transfer rankings, they're the 36th class ranked in the entire country. So definitely one of PJ's best classes so far when it comes to the rankings themselves. But I think they're going to they're going to definitely be a foundational group and i think if you put this group with that 2023 group and the 2022 group the gophers could have some special foundations building up for them to move forward into this newer bigger big 10 so who are my top 5 in this class well first i want to give you a couple honorable mentions riley sunrum an all american bowl player 
defensive line. He could find his way into opportunity early, knowing that this defensive line has some vacancies available. And if he plays on the interior, he could really put his name in the conversation. I think Zahir Rayner, he's a player who can hit like a menace. I mean, he can lay impact real good. And I think Zahir Rayner is a player that can be a sneaky player, especially long term for the Gophers. So I'm excited to see what he do- does in his time at Minnesota. I also think Simon Seidel is a name that people uh, probably might not recognize. He is a Minnesota kid from Hill Murray, but he played hockey. He is very athletic. He's got a ton of speed. And I think he could be a sneaky player for the Gophers long term. So overall, those are just a handful of the guys that I think are honorable mentions in this class but let's get to the top five in this take five and my number five is linebacker from minnesota detroit lakes mason carrier i think mason carrier is a name that will end up being a foundational player in this linebackers room after the cody lindenbergs are gone after maverick baranowski is in his some of his upperclassmen years i think once those guys are starting to move on and pass the baton i think mason carrier is going to be at the forefront he is a dog he is a strong dude he is a guy that wants to be a gopher through and through the second joe rossi left he wasn't considering leaving he was like i am locked in ready to lead the charge and lead this room and I think he is going to find a way in his true freshman year to potentially be on special teams or something and find a way onto the field. I think by the time he is a redshirt freshman or a redshirt sophomore, he is going to be a starter type player for the Gophers and really leave his legacy here in Minnesota as a hometown kid leading that linebacker room that has been productive for so many years since PJ Fleck has been here. So he comes in at number five for me. Now, number four is one of my favorite players in this entire class. None other than Brett Carroll, the center future at center in my opinion but he also could play on the interior if needed i think that though this gopher staff really really loves the upside the potential the iq of brett carroll i talked to him on the show if you haven't seen that yet you should definitely search for it on youtube or wherever you get your podcast and check out the interview we did with brett carroll because he is just a guy that you know he's gonna find a way to compete and to put his all on the field and produce for the Golden Gophers. He knew what he was looking for in his programs. He had some really top-notch programs after him, and he was like, this is going to be the best fit, and Coach Callahan is going to bring out the best in him. I know this Gophers staff wants to get him to campus ASAP. I'm talking the second he graduates, get that man out here. Let's get him going. Let's get him in the playbook. Let's get him working out with us. Let's get him training with some of these starters so that way next year or even maybe in his freshman year he could play on a two deep, but in his soft more or red shirt freshman year i mean he could be a starter for this Gophers team. He could be the future at the center position. He could be the next John Michael Schmitz of this Gophers team. And I truly believe that with my full chest, Brett Carroll state champion in wrestling, I believe multiple times state champion in track, probably about to be multiple times and a leader on and off the football field. He has the bend. He's got the flexibility. He has the understanding and he is only going to get better. Brett Carroll definitely comes in at number four and I would love to move him even higher. Coming in at number three for me is Drake Lindsey, quarterback from Arkansas, Gatorade player of the year in Arkansas. Tons of upside could be the future at the quarterback position for Minnesota. Coach Fleck has already been singing his praises in the early parts of this spring. He is an early enrollee freshman, so he's already practicing. But the best part of that is that he has attached himself to the hip of Max Brosmer, who has been doing this, understands film breakdown, understands what it takes to be a collegiate football starter. And the more and more that Drake can just soak in and absorb and understand, I think it only helps him push for that starter position moving forward. And if he can secure that starter position, he could honestly be one or two in this class. The only reason I don't have him locked in at one or two in this class is because I don't know what happens at this quarterback position moving forward. Can he grasp onto it all and take the role? Do they hit the transfer portal and look for another heavily experienced person? Does Jackson Pollock of the 2025 class push and try to compete with him. There are so many things up in the air, but that being said, Drake Lindsay and his size, his intangibles, his arm strength, his production that he's put out there, the anticipatory throws he's put on film. He doesn't put the ball in harm's way. He doesn't turn the ball over. I believe he had like 81 touchdowns to like seven interceptions. This dude has everything 
to be an absolute stud. And he didn't get enough of the power five looks that he probably should have got in his recruitment process. But that is only to the benefit of the Gophers who hopefully have a gem in the making. I think Drake Lindsay showed early in this spring ball, which he's still getting used to the speed of it coming from Arkansas high school football. But he showed he can play with touch. I've seen some anticipatory throws already from this true sh- freshman in his first few practices that just goes to show you if he continues to click and the game slows down for him he could be a dude and that's what you really look forward to in drake Lindsay, who comes in at number three Number two for me is Nathan Roy, another early enrollee freshman, has the opportunity to play maybe on the tackle positions. I believe he was working as the second or third left tackle in these spring sessions already. But the reason that I'm really excited is because he's a very fluid player. He has a a quick get off. He is a player that has a ton of upside. One of the best players, I believe he was the best player in the state of Wisconsin for a vast majority of his recruiting period. And he is a guy that is going to find his way to the field quick. I don't know if he'll play as a true freshman, but I think as a redshirt freshman, he could be a starter for this Gophers team starting next year and be a staple for them moving forward. Another guy who played in the All-American Bowl. I forgot to mention that with Brett Carroll. Both he and Brett Carroll, All-American Bowl players in this last season. Uh, I believe Nathan Roy didn't play because he was uh, rehabbing from an injury, but he is a guy who has that type of uh, skill, that type of talent, and that type of upside. So I think Nathan Roy is a future staple on the offensive line, probably at a tackle position, and I can't wait to see what he does with Gophers in the Number one for me is the heavily recruited, highly recruited Koi Parrish, number one kid in the state from Minnesota, safety galore, extraordinaire, does it all, kick returning, uh, punt returning, DB, running back, quarterback, wide receiver. He did everything and then some for Esco. And everybody's like, well, he's playing at Esco, so who cares? Who We don't know who he's playing. He's playing a bunch of nobodies, what have you. Then he goes to the All-American Pro Bowl where he's playing some of the best players in the entire country that are going to a ton of P5 schools all over the place, and he wins the All-American Bowl MVP. He's super athletic, super gifted, and he is going to be – a staple for the Gophers. I have zero doubts about it. He's going to be a player who could play as a true freshman this upcoming season. And that's why this safeties room is all up in the air, in my opinion, because he could even not being an early enrollee, if he can get a grasp with the playbook, he can play fast, play quick, play instinctive. He could play himself into the rotation or a starting opportunity some point in his freshman season. They're going to find a way to get this guy, their prized recruit on the field early and often, just like they did with Darius Taylor. And I think he's going to show out and then some. So that is our top five take five of this class. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. But we're going to wrap up today's show by talking about who could be potential starters for this class moving forward, both this year, maybe not this year, but in the long term, especially. And then also who are players to keep in mind long term. Like I said, we're going to dive into all of that coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Fire TV because Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis and more. Fire TV offers you amazing viewing experiences from your TV as well as your Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV and it provides you access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. And best of all, Fire TV recently created fire tv channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free and that includes us here at locked on you can find us there you can also find most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well fire tv channels lets you dive into game analysis highlights and more to keep up with the latest in the world of sports and you can also keep up with great news entertainment gaming travel and cooking videos as well so the fire tv channels on fire tv or on alexa devices if you haven't checked it out you absolutely should trust me on that one and you can learn more by visiting amazon.com slash locked on fire tv again that's amazon.com slash locked on fire tv All right, Gophers fans, this one's a little bit shorter of a show, but because we don't know what is happening with this class of 2024, but I want to talk about sneaky names on this list. Who could end up starters in the next two years? I think 
Koi Parrish is obviously at the front of that list. I've already talked about it. Drake Lindsay could be the quarterback of the future starting next year after Max Brosmer. And then you talk about possible starters in two to three years, maybe by redshirt sophomore seasons. Uh, I think Nathan Roy could maybe be there. I think he could maybe even be there as a redshirt freshman. Brett Carroll is another player. Uh, Mo Sain is a defensive tackle that I think that this Gophers room needs some more depth in that interior defensive line. And Mo Sain is a guy who could put his name at the forefront in the long term as he continues to build, as he continues to get stronger, and as he continues to work with Coach Winston Thielotibadir. So he is definitely a name to keep in mind. Riley Sunrum, same reasons. Also an All-American Bowl type guy, four-star type guy. And then... Uh, the tight ends. The tight ends in this class are very interesting. Julian Johnson, Jacob Simpson, both of them early enrollee guys, both of them working with the Gophers right now. But tight end always takes a couple of years, one, maybe two, before you can really find yourself on the field because of needing to get stronger and be able to hold off edge rushers and be able to pass block and be able to run block and be able to understand the blocking concepts that you would learn as like an offensive lineman. Then on top of that, you also have to learn the route tree and the different route concepts and the different responsibilities. There's so much to learn as tight ends. And I think both of those guys carry a ton of upside, but it could be a year or two before we ever see them take a snap for the Gophers. So it's definitely a long-term investment at the tight end position. But if you're keeping them in mind for long-term, who are others? I think Zahir Rayner, like I said, dude who can lay the smack down. I think he could play great at the nickel position for the Gophers. And we've seen him play a little bit of nickel linebacker in high school, but he is a safety prospect through and through. But if the opportunities aren't there at safety, if Koi Parrish is a starter, if, uh, Kerry Brown finds his way as a starter and those young guys that could take up a long-term uh, eligibility I think Rayner can find himself being a stud nickel player, especially with new defensive coordinator Corey Heatherman, who has a, a tenacity for those type of players and getting their usage within his system. So I think he could be a big impact player for the Gophers in that capacity if the safety role doesn't end up shaking out. Jalen Smith is a player that Coach Fleck really loved, thinks he's, he was under-recruited, and he comes in as a wide receiver. So as Daniel Jackson runs out of eligibility, as Elijah Spencer runs out of eligibility, as Lamecki Brockington gets older, they're going to have going to need players to step up into bigger roles over this next year or two. And Jalen Smith is a name to keep in mind there. I, I know coach Fleck mentioned his route running ability and how he creates separation. If he can find in a way, a way to do that elite and an elite level in the college football landscape, maybe he could find himself into a similar role. Like we've seen Daniel Jackson slowly progressively get more and more responsibilities since his true freshman year and beyond to be the number one receiver for the team for back to back years. So Jalen Smith is a name to keep in mind. And then Fame Ijeboy, running back, super, super fast, super, super athletic, testing out of the gym, jumps out the gym uh, and everything like that. Coach Fleck was ecstatic that they got this guy to commit. And he was ecstatic that others hadn't found out about just how freaky fast and freaky athletic this guy was. So as he, it might not be this year, it might not be next year. Knowing that Darius Taylor is on hand, knowing that we have a couple transfers in Marcus Major and C.A. Bengura, but as C.A. Bengura and Marcus Major maybe run out of eligibility, as Darius Taylor starts to get looks towards the, the pros in the NFL, Fame Ijeboy might be right there to step in line and be the speedster this room needs and then some. So I think those are definitely some players to keep in mind long term for the Gophers in this class. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know if I've missed out on anybody. Like I said, this class is one of the highest rated classes for PJ Flex. So we could have different flavors, different strokes for different folks. And I want to know your thoughts down below. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube, leave a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. Also, I want to say I've gotten a couple comments about how the intro is a little bit louder than everything else. I'm working on it to try and get that leveled off, but also we're going to have a new intro coming to the show, a little bit different, but I'm trying to keep those key flavors, those key elements of our intro into the new one coming out, but we'll definitely make sure that bad boy is leveled off for you too. I will see you next time. Roll the boats, guy, Imago Gophers, as always, and don't forget to hit subscribe.